Back now on America's Forum, and you see the uh, entry there at Newsmax.com, the headline citing a CNN poll. 78% of Americans favor military authorization against ISIS. Now, it's also true the same poll shows that a clear majority, 57%, disapprove of President Obama's handling of ISIS and 54% disapprove of the president's handling of terrorism in general. Joining me now to talk about that story and some other concerns, United States Congressman French Hill of Arkansas, who joins us by a phone. Hey, it's good to have you, French. J.D., treat to be with you. Thanks for the invite, my friend. You bet. Uh, the view not from Capitol Hill as you're back in your district in Arkansas, but it is the view of French Hill. You heard the numbers in the polling. Do you believe Congress in the final analysis will vote for another authorization of military force against ISIS and give this to President Obama? You know, J.D., I think uh, Congress is going to look very, very uh, carefully at what the president has sent up to the Capitol that he's requesting and look at it skeptically, frankly, about what it's going to take to have a winning strategy for victory over ISIS. Uh, the president's uh, draft uh, suggested authorization has time limits, has uh, force limits, and there are many in Congress that question that that's uh, the right direction. But his response is overdue, and I think uh, people will take a serious look at it. Uh, a couple of criticisms of this, French, is that uh, the president is actually limiting the amount of action he can take. And then I guess it was Mac Thornberry, who chairs uh, the Armed Services Committee now, saying it's as if our military would have to have lawyers on hand to consult. It is overly litigious. Do you share those concerns? I do share those concerns. I don't think uh, that... Uh, uh, you should have Congress trying to uh, legislate uh, uh, and limit a president's uh, ability to carry out uh, executive actions of conducting uh, international warfare. I mean, I just think I'm not so sure it's even constitutional uh, to provide those limitations. And, and I think you want to have commanders on the ground, have a clear mission, have the resources to uh, have uh, victory in that mission have a mission that's supported by the uh, American people and therefore uh, has uh, the support uh, in the Congress. And I, I'm not sure that uh, the president's draft uh, heads in the right direction. In a broader sense, French, is it good to have this debate in Congress, have both the House and Senate bring this question forward for consideration by the representatives of the American people? I think so. I think it's always healthy to uh, discuss the most important issues of the day, and certainly whenever we propose to commit American uh, treasure and troops uh, abroad, uh, we need to have that uh, discussion as a family uh, here in the country, and so I do think it's important. But I, I must say, uh, is there a clear and present danger? Do we have a strategy for victory? Is it a strategy that's got the support of the American people and, uh, and the Congress? And those are important questions, and I think that's where you'll have a lot of discussion based on the president's proposal. A little more than four minutes remain in our time for this conversation, French. I'll bring it back home literally for you uh, there in central Arkansas as you are. And, you know, people, they, they hear the term district work period. They think it's a euphemism, but that's not the case. I know you're getting around the district, especially with reference to the Keystone, the Keystone Pipeline. If the president vetoes that bill, what will happen in your state and specifically what will happen in your district? Well, I have campaigned uh, all along for a national uh, strategy for North American energy independence. This gives us foreign policy options. This gives us national security options. This allows us to have a, uh, an abundant, uh, uh, cost-effective flow of energy to recruit manufacturing back to our country. So I've, I've been talking about this issue for months. The president's dilly-dallying on this for six years has caused seen the uh, cost of this pipeline to go up 50%. There's a majority of uh, Americans that support it. The Congress supports it. The courts support it. And uh, we need to move forward. And uh, right here in Little Rock, we make the pipe for the Keystone Pipeline. And there's 700 miles of it stacked up at a railhead about 10 miles from where I'm sitting today. And in fact, I'm I think... over there this afternoon to meet with management. Right. I understand that's on your schedule today. And uh, if, if the pipeline 
is not built, what does it mean to all the jobs at that facility in central Arkansas? Well, there's, uh, this uh, has supported about 600 jobs in our area, making this size pipe for Keystone and for other pipelines like it. And we have to remind ourselves, this is a private sector project that's helping us towards our goal for North American energy security. It's not a government project. And they'll support over 40,000 jobs uh, incidental to it uh, in connecting uh, oil from Canada to Houston. And it's something that needs to be done. And I'm flabbergasted that everybody's for it except for one guy who's down at 1600 Pennsylvania. All right. Got a couple of minutes left, French. Got to talk to you about that ruling yesterday that came from a federal judge down in Texas that uh, has stopped at least legally speaking, has stopped the president's plan for executive amnesty. Your take on that ruling, and what do you think happens next? I think the ruling was encouraging. I have uh, certainly studied this issue. I believe the president overstepped his constitutional bounds with his uh, executive order granting 5 million people work status in the U.S., and uh, I was proud to vote against funding for that action. So I was pleased to see the uh, district court's uh, ruling. And mindful of that, do you believe the Senate will try to pass what you guys in the House passed in terms of funding Homeland Security but defunding any effort toward executive amnesty? Uh, I certainly hope they do. The House has done its job. The Democrats in the Senate are now blocking it. And if there's uh, some challenge to it, you can uh, take it up with, once again, uh, the Democrats who are are now blocking fully funding Homeland Security just to defend an illegal action by the president on amnesty. 56% of Americans disapprove of the president's use of the executive order, whether they support immigration reform or don't. This is not the way to do it. And the president himself has said 22 times that he didn't have the authority to act unilaterally. And uh, we have that contradiction again between what the president was saying earlier and the action he has taken. And, of course, the federal judge weighing in gets the third co-equal branch of government involved. We will see what happens at the appellate level with that lawsuit and the efforts you make in Congress when you return with your colleagues following this district work period. French Hill. encourage these Democrats to vote in, con in, uh, in the Senate to support us. Fair enough, French Hill. You get the last word, and we do appreciate the time. We hope you'll come back and visit with us again real soon. The view from French Hill as members of Congress are away from Capitol Hill, and we thank the congressman for joining us from Central Arkansas. When we come back, Josh Orton on the left, Steve Dace on the right. They're going to mix it up.